Our second speaker is Glenn Keller. Glenn is a theater major that somehow started programming assembly line language on punch cards and has been stuck in IT ever since. He loves bicycles. He owns nine, uh, skiing, and generally any excuse to get outdoors, outdoors. He believes when companies take care of their employees and their customers, everything else will take care of themselves. He lives in Westfield with his wife, daughter, and two crazy Bichon Friesen named George and Ray. Glenn thinks he's been he's very lucky. So let's welcome jo Glenn to the <laughs> to the Spark stage. Thank you. is the residue of hard work. You make your own luck, right? These are ideas that we embrace in our society, right? We're optimists, we're in America. We believe that whatever we do, we could be whatever we want with a little bit of hard work, right? So if someone says to us something like, everyone has the same chance to be as great as they want, we don't bat an eyelash, right? The problem with that is it's just not true. 10% of the people in the world are born into extreme poverty. 70% have to get by on less than $10 a day. But we're sitting here in the US where the bottom 10% of the population is better off than two thirds of the rest of the world. So if you happen to be born here, like I was, well, we hit the reproductive jackpot, <laughs> right? I'm not saying that hard work is not important. Of course it is. It's the foundation of success. But what I'm saying is sometimes it doesn't matter because stuff just happens. My mother worked really hard. She was a single mom. She had two jobs, and she needed them to support us. One day she walks into a building. She's going to get a better job, slips on a wet floor, never works again in her life. Bad luck. But then she starts dating a man. The man starts to like me, says to my mother, you know, your boy's got a lot of potential, but he's getting into a lot of trouble. We need to get him out of this environment. And just like that, I go from you know, vandalizing cars, flipping off police officers in the streets of New York, to this beautiful school in the Shenandoah Valley, where <laughs> yes, military school, where I'm doing things like you know, going to cotillions, for God's sake, okay? Let's be clear. I took advantage of it, but it was good luck. You remember when we used to say things like, oh, there's a person that's down on their luck. I, I don't hear that so much anymore. Now what we hear are things like welfare queen, trash, lazy, or even worse. What's happened? Have we become meaner in our society? I, I think we have, because what comes out of our mouth starts in our brains, and what's in our brains determines how much empathy we have for people. And if you don't have empathy, you're not going to try to help. So Glenn, big deal. OK, we'll change the language, right? Now we have empathy. The problems in the world are just overwhelming. No, they're not. The orange here represents the population increase over time. The blue represents the number of people born into extreme poverty, and it's going down. How is that possible? One word, technology, <laughs> right? <laughs> and yeah, Bender, right? <laughs> And, and, and I'm not just saying that because, you know, we're at Sparks Tech, but it's true, right? In their book, The Future is Better Than You Think, the authors make a compelling case that higher productivity because of the decreasing cost of technology is going to lead us to a better world. And when they talk about technology, what's the main technology we're talking about? Well, it's the Internet. There's a report by the Dalberg Group that addresses the economic impact of the Internet on Africa, and they say it's undisputed that it's an engine for economic growth and social change. How? Well, here's an example. Salman Khan forms the Khan Academy. The idea is everybody deserves the same education no matter where they are. So think about this. When the internet is everywhere, education is everywhere. And where an education is everywhere, then hope is everywhere. Heck, in the US, if you work for Starbucks, even part time, you can get a degree from Arizona State University and they will pay for it. How can they afford that? Yeah, the internet, it's online, it's inexpensive. Okay, so we have some tools that we could use to make a difference in the world, like this drone delivering medical supplies in Rwanda. But do we have the empathy that we need to embrace and accelerate that change? I'm not sure that we do. Not when in our own country, 
over 10 percent of the high schools can graduate less than 60 percent of their students. That's 1,700 high schools that are dropout factories. That's over a million children that we are just writing off. Yet we'll go out there and we will say something like, everyone has the same chance to be as great, blah, blah, blah. We need to change this language. And I believe when we change this language, then the level of empathy in our society will come up. And when the level of empathy will comes up, well, then maybe everybody has the chance to be as great as they want. Thank you. Head into town.